Hey, it's Chris Nichols here from Bow Roach Outfitters, and today I want to talk to you guys about streamer fishing and just show you some basics. You know, when you're starting out, it can be really hard to get into fish, and generally the main reason why is you're not presenting that fly exactly right to the fish. You know, especially on a river like the Bow River where there's lots of food, the fish are very picky. If your presentations aren't good, you're probably just not going to get any hits. But what we're going to talk about will also apply to your home waters as well, absolutely. Now, let's get into talking about what kind of gear you need to make this all happen. Now I'm using a seven weight rod today. That's a great all round streamer rod, but you know, a six weight rod's also perfectly fine. And in fact, six weights are really versatile. They're a little bit lighter. You can use them for nymphing, streamer fishing, and even some dry fly fishing. The seven weight will throw bigger flies, but because we're throwing to trout today, that's not really a necessity, but it's gonna work just fine. Now the other thing I wanna talk about is that you gotta get your streamer down under the surface of the water and swinging through the proper strike zone. So we need some sort of sink tip or sinking line. Now on here, I've got an integrated sink tip line. That means I've got a full fly line and it's got this weighted sinking tip built right into it. Now that means you can pretty much only use it for streamer fishing, but I do find that it gives you just really nice swings, presents the fly a little bit nicer. But another great option is to use a floating line as normal. Then you can go for dry flies nymphing with this and then just use a poly leader sink tip. It's basically like a nylon leader but made out of a heavy weighted material that will sink and you just loop it on the end of your fly line and now that will get your streamers down. That's really versatile because if you want to then nymph for dry fly fish you simply take off the poly leader, put on a standard nylon leader again and you're ready to go. Now these sink tips they do come in different sink rates uh, I would say if you've got a sink that goes three inches per second and then a sink that goes six inches per second in your bag, those are two great choices. You can cover a lot of stuff. If the water's moving a little bit faster or you want to fish deeper, that six inch per second sink line is fantastic. And if it's more of a walking pace or shallower buckets, then that three inch per second is ideal. All right, now a common question that we get asked then is, okay, after we've got our sink tip or our sink line, how do we then attach the fly to that? Do we use a leader? The answer is no, you don't. For streamer fishing, it's very simple. We're just gonna put a section of straight monofilament or fluorocarbon tippet on there, something pretty heavy. I mean, in the bow, I like to fish 15 pound fluorocarbon. You know, you can fish lighter than that. Uh, and basically, we're just gonna do about a three foot or four foot section to start, and we'll just cut that back as we tie our flies on. Once it gets around two feet or so, it's probably a good time to re-tie. So first thing we have to do is with that straight mono, show you the knot to attach it to your fly line, and then we'll show you the knot to attach your fly. Now, if we look at my integrated sink tip line, it has a loop on there already. So I'm gonna teach you how to put a loop on the end of your tippet. If you're using a poly leader, it generally doesn't have a loop on the end that goes to the fly. It just has a section of monofilament. Now you can tie a loop on that, or you can make a tippet ring on the end of that, for example, and then you could tie off your tippet onto that. But uh, for this, I'm gonna make a loop, and this is useful anytime you wanna build your own leaders as well. I'm gonna do a perfection loop. It does weaken the line strength a little bit, but again, we're talking 15 pound fluoro. We've got plenty to spare. I'm just gonna make one overhand loop there, and then I'm gonna take my, my tippet, I'm gonna put it over my finger here in front and make another shorter loop, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tag end, I'm gonna make sure it goes between those two loops. Now, I'm gonna reach in through the back of my taller loop, grab the shorter loop, and then I'm just gonna pull nice and straight. You should get that tag end coming basically 90 degrees off of the main line. We've got a nice simple loop. We're gonna tighten that up. It's super easy to tie. Now to tie your fly onto the end of your tippet, of course you can use any classic knot. You can use a uni knot or clinch knot, whatever you like to use. But I'm gonna show you another little trick here. We're gonna tie a very simple loop knot. It's strong, but it also means that streamer is gonna have a little bit more extra movement and that can really make a difference. This is pretty easy to do. I'm gonna make one simple overhand knot leaving myself you know, a couple inches of tag end here. I'm gonna pull that knot pretty small, okay? Obviously don't tighten it up all the way, but we want a nice little small uh, knot there. Then I'm gonna take the tag end, I'm gonna feed it through the eye of my uh, hook here. There we go, and it's gonna rest just around that little uh, overhand knot. Now I'm gonna pinch that overhand knot and the tag end, and I'm just gonna wrap this tag end around the main line twice. That's it, so once and twice. And then that tag end is gonna come back and go through that overhand knot. That's all you have to do. Right through the hole of the overhand knot. And then as we sort of gently pull everything tight, moisten our knot as always, and just cinch it up. And what we're gonna get is this nice little, there we go, 
nice little loop on the end of that streamer there. So I can clip off that tag end, and now when I'm swinging that streamer, it's just got a lot of movement going on there, and that'll really help it have action in the water. So let's talk about the kind of water that we're looking for streamer fishing. We want this kind of walking pace water. You can see it's just up to my knees here and I've got this nice big run and that's a great idea for streamer fishing. We want to be able to cast that streamer out and then swing it across this whole run and that's going to present that fly to as many fish as possible. Now you don't want to go too deep right away. Certainly search the bank for fish first. I guarantee you that right below me in the stream here there are fish sitting and waiting. So don't feel like you should go right out to the middle and start casting there yet. You can work your way out there. Because the idea is I want to cast my fly out as far as I can into the river and then let the current grab it and swing it back till it's below me. Now I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to shuffle down a little bit. I'm going to cast again. The guides call this the streamer shuffle. And what we're just doing is taking slices out of the river, presenting our fly further and further down. You really cover a lot of water very efficiently when you do this. Okay, so let's give this a shot. I'm going to cast my fly out. Basically across the river, you know, 90 degrees, maybe slightly down. I'm going to do a big upstream mend. And then what I'm going to do is just let that fly sink and let the current grab it. And then I'm just going to swing it here. I'm holding my fly line under my finger here. I can put my left hand on the line as well. And then this is great. If I feel a tug, I can set the hook. I can also, you know, do little pulls and twitches if I want to try to entice a fish and uh, just let that swing go through. Once it gets down to the bottom and now it's in slack water and it's not swinging anymore, then I'll just do little strips and see if I can entice a strike as I bring the fly back up to a proper casting distance. Now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to show you a couple tricks here. Once we do that first big cast and that first upstream mend, it's important to get that fly line above because that lets the fly sink. I'll often raise my rod tip to take up the slack and then slowly let it down as the fly starts to swing. And I just do that because a fish might strike right when the streamer hits the water. And if I have done that upstream mend, but I've got a whole bunch of slack in the line, if I try to set the hook, it's probably not going to move it at all and I'm going to lose that fish. So I like to hold my rod tip up and then just gradually let it out onto the surface of the river as it starts that swing. Another thing I do want to say as a trick here is you're going to be able to tell when a fish strikes. Streamer fishing is fun because you feel that active tug. But if you do feel that tug and you set the hook, try to set the hook back towards shore. So for me it would be this direction to my left because generally a fish is going to chase that fly, grab it, and then want to return to its lie. And if I pull the hook straight or set up or even pull out to the river, I could very well pull that fly out of its mouth. But if he's already turned to go back to his home and I hit towards shore, I have a really good chance of a solid hookup. Okay, so I know we went through that pretty quick here. So let's watch Nick fish the river now and just talk through as he's working that fly. So first you can see he's going to cast right out to the middle of the river and immediately at big upstream mend that really lets that sink tip get down and bring the fly into the strike zone. Now he's going to let the current grab his whole rig and just gently swing it through that walking pace water. Now you'll notice here he's actually doing sometimes little twitches with his left hand, just kind of giving the fly little pulls, a little bit of movement. You know, if you do a swing through neutral without twitching and you find that it doesn't get any bumps, sometimes it's nice then to just cast out to the same spot, swing it again, and this time give the fly a little bit more action. Sometimes that'll get a strike. Now he's gonna let that fly line basically swing down below him. Now the current's not grabbing it anymore and it's slowing down. This is where he's gonna now just retrieve the fly with some hand movement and you can try different stuff long quick strips very aggressive movement or tiny little pulls mix it up experiment and as you do more you'll start to find what you think is going to work well for the fish once he's gotten back to you know a distance for casting he's going to take a few steps down in the river cast out again and just keep repeating the whole process and you're just going to do that whole streamer shuffle all the way down through the run and hopefully pick up some fish on the way just like you can see nick did here all right, so I hope you found that useful and educational. And I know there's a lot of little subtleties that we're talking about it, but it is those subtleties like tying loop knots to your streamers and, you know, letting the slack gently go down onto the water and then start the swing and, you know, doing things like setting the hook to the bank that will actually make a big difference in catching those fish. Learn how to do the streamer shuffle, and I think you guys will have a really good time with streamer fishing. Please leave comments below. Also, absolutely questions about how to streamer fish. We'd love to answer those. Check out BoverTroutFitters.com while you're at it if you need some gear. And otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining us. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon for another episode.